higher derivatives. So a stone is thrown up in the air from the top of a building and allow, allowed to fall to the ground. It's like, yes, gravity, you may actually, I don't know, is it allowed to go into orbit? The equation of the height of the stone above the ground is given by h of t is negative 5t squared plus 20t plus 60, where h is in meter and t is in seconds. Determine dh by dt and describe what that represents. Okay, so what's dh by dt? dh by dt is equal to negative 10, negative 10 plus 20. t plus 20. And what does that represent? Instantaneous rate of change of height with respect to time, which we are going to call velocity, right? So it's the instantaneous, instantaneous rate of change of height with respect to, which I've abbreviated as WRT, time, uh, which is the velocity, right? It's a change in displacement, really, So, which is velocity. Uh, determine d by dt of dh by dt. So in other words, we're going to take the derivative of the derivative, right? So what is d? So we're doing d by dt of negative 10t plus 20, which is negative 10. And this is the rate of change of, well, what do we determine this quantity to be? So the dh by dt is the velocity. This is the change in velocity, which is acceleration. Okay, so it's the change in velocity which is the acceleration. Recognize that number, rounded number, negative 10. Yeah, it's kind of like 9.81, right? But it's also going down. Well, because that's our frame of reference would have negative is going towards uh, the ground because we're allowing it to fall to the ground. If y is equal to h of t, then other notations for d by dt of dh by dt are shown below. So the derivative with respect to time of the derivative of height with respect to time is h double prime, h with a 2 of t, y double prime, right, if it was y equals y with a little 2 there, d2h t, d t2, h of t, and 1, I don't know why we left it off, but d2h over dt squared, right? It's just a fancy way of saying the second derivative, right? So it's like, d, you know, and you could kind of read that as d squared h over dt squared, but you should look at that and say, oh, it's just they're looking for the second derivative, right, of uh, dh of dt. In general, the nth derivative, right, because you can keep going, what's change in acceleration? Everybody know? So like we've got change in position, right? And the, change, the rate of change of position is velocity. The rate of change of velocity is acceleration. What's the rate of change of acceleration? It actually exists. It would be the fourth derivative. It's called, uh, well, so uh, velocity is first derivative. Oh, sorry, third derivative. It's called jerk. There's a rate of change of acceleration. Which you kind of think about if you're in a car and that's happening. You might get jerked around a bit, but... Anyways, uh, so the nth derivative of f of x can be expressed as f with a little n up here, saying which derivative of x, or just f with a little n up there, or y with a little n up there, or d and an n up there, right? So we, we tend to go like second derivative will often show like this, right? y double prime. Third derivative, y triple prime. When you start getting into fourth and higher, that's when you start. It's like, I don't want to write four primes. Right? It's not easy to count and that. So 
generally we go up to about three primes and then we just flip over to numbers, right? We'll go four, five, six. The position of a tiny little, it seems redundant, scurrying rodent is given by s of t is equal to 2t cubed minus 15 squared plus 24t. I kind of look at that, but I mean, they're probably screwing back and forth a little bit, right? I mean, because it's cubic, so it's probably got, you know, doing a little bit of this. Uh, where s is in meters and t is in minutes, right? We don't want to make it seconds because the thing would be like firing through pretty darn quick. You're saying both is in his dust. Determine the object's velocity. And now we're objectifying the tiny little scurrying rodent. There are many of them now. Yeah, well, determine the object's velocity. I think we're just objectifying the rodent. And acceleration at one. I was going to suggest we change object to rodent, but whatever. Determine the rodent's, you know, in a little apostrophe. Yeah, so it belongs to the rodent. Uh, velocity and acceleration at uh, uh, 1, 3, 4, and 5 minutes. So V of t is equal to S prime of t, which is equal to They're saying the derivative, right? I wrote that down. 6t squared minus 30t plus 24. And a of t, the acceleration, is the change in velocity. So it's v prime of t, which is s what? Double prime of t. Which is, so it just means you're going to look here. You've already calculated it, so you're just going to calculate this derivative, right? Which is what? 18t minus 30? No, oh, sorry, 12. 12t minus 30. <clears throat> I have this in front of me. I always write it down. Okay, so now you want to fill in this velocity and acceleration. Work out v of 1, a of 1, v of 3, a of 3, and so on. So I shall pause, and you can... Uh, so this is a graph of uh, the position s in red, the velocity in blue, and the acceleration in green of the rodent. And going back here, so we have our table filled in. So describe the objectified rodent's motion at one minute and at five minutes. So what's happening at one minute? It's going nowhere. It's going nowhere, right? So it's velocity, so it's stopped. Right? So one minute it stopped. Let's go back here. Just one one minute. Ah, so here it is, right? So it, it's run away from its starting point and has been startled by something, perhaps, and it stopped, and then it's going to run back towards. And uh, what was the next thing? All right. Oh, so we should write that in. Uh, so at one minute, the road. The rodent has stopped. Uh, accelerationally at one minute, what's it doing? Well, so it's negative 18. What's the, is that 12, 14, no. What's the, one, two, it's like two and a half. Okay, so probably about negative eight. Well, we worked it out, right? Oh, negative 18 meters per minute. So its velocity is indicating it's going to be moving back. Uh, the rodent has stopped. And uh, well, that's its acceleration is negative 18, right? So it, it's slow, right? It's had to be moving. It has to be stopping. Um, has stopped and the acceleration. Acceleration is negative 18 meters per minute squared, so that's the rate at which it's stopping. And at five minutes, what's happening? Yeah, so five minutes is here, right? So its, uh, it's position is, well, it's heading back towards its starting point. So it, it is at a negative displacement. It's the other way about whatever, five. It's six, seven. Uh, its velocity is, it's, 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 think at what point does it burst into flames? Air resistance and that. 
it's the velocity is uh, it's moving pretty quick. Well, it, it's meters per minute, really. So right, it's not that fast. But, uh, so what do we got? Twenty ish. Wait, we actually have the number right. It's uh, twenty four meters per minute, and it's accelerating. Right. Okay, and it's accelerating. Uh, so okay, back there. What do we got? So at five minutes. It is uh, moving at a velocity of 24 meters per minute. It's not just going it's velocity uh, and that's a positive velocity, right? So it's moving away from or it will be moving away from uh, its starting point and is accelerating at 30 meters per minute squared. All right, so that's uh, that position thing, right? Any position function, the, the first derivative of that is the object's velocity. The second derivative is acceleration. The third derivative is jerk. Pretty sure it's not jerk. Determine the indicated derivative of each of the following. So determine y triple prime. So the third derivative, if y is equal to the square root of x times the square root of 16x. So we might want to manipulate this a little bit before we start. Right, so we could say y is equal to, so let's take this x and move it under that root sign. So if I'm going to move an x under a root sign, what have I got to do to it? I've got to square it, right? Close. So it's the root of 16, it's the root of the root of 16x cubed, right? So that's equal to 16x cubed to the half, to the half, right? So the, the inner root, the root on the 16x cubed is the square root, so that takes 16x cubed to the half, and then that is being square rooted. So what do we end up with? 16x cubed to the quarter, which is 16 to the quarter, which is the 4th root of 16, which is 2, right? And x to the 3 quarters. So there's y. Right? Now that's going to be pretty easy to do derivatives on, right? If you start with the root of the root of and start applying the chain rule, and you know, you're in for a little, little bit of pain, right? Whereas we just simplify this. Okay, so great. What's y prime? 2 times 3 quarters, which is 6 quarters, or 3 halves, right? So it's 3 halves x to the negative 1 quarter, right? So 3 quarters minus 1 is negative 1 quarter. What's y double prime? Well, I'm going to pull this. So we've got negative 3 eighths. So negative 3 eighths x to the negative 5 quarters. And one more. So that's positive 15 over 32 x to the negative 9 quarters. Okay, so we should do a little cleanup on that, right? Because, you know, I mean, the original started with some roots, right? So we should take it back to the roots. So that'll be 15 over 32, and we've got the fourth root of x to the ninth. Oh, but wait, x to the ninth holds within itself some fourth root, right? So what can we pull out? We can pull out a multiple of four that's lower than nine, right? Which would be x to the eighth. So we think of x to the ninth as x to the eighth times x. We want the fourth root of x to the eighth, which is x squared. 
So y triple prime is 15 over 32x squared times the fourth root of x. Okay. So, you know, I mean, you're likely at some point to be sitting there looking at 15 over 32x to the negative 9 quarters, and you're looking in the back, and it's got like that 15 over 32x squared, fourth root of x, and you just have to say, oh, right, yeah, okay. So I can take the negative 9 quarters, make it a positive 9 quarters by moving that down to the denominator, and it's the fourth root of x to the ninth, and where the heck the x squared? Oh, right, yeah, because x to the ninth, etc. First prime. So the first prime is 2x, what was it, x, it was 2 times 3 quarters, wasn't it? Or no? So 2 times 3 quarters is 6 quarters. Oh. You have 6 quarters, you have a dollar and a half, one and a half, three halves. It's okay, right? It's, it's Usually your answer isn't wrong, it's just like, whoa, this is like a different form. And what's really interesting is you can have wildly different forms of a second derivative. So determine d squared y, right? D two. I read that as d2y. d2y over dx squared. I don't know why I read it that way. Whatever. Basically, it says determine the second derivative of y is equal to x root x minus 1. There's a couple things you could do, right? We could take that x and throw it under the root sign, where it would become an x squared, and we'd end up with the square root of x cubed minus x squared which would be the x cubed minus x squared to the half, and then we could work with that. We're not going to do that, though. Right? So what we're going to do is this. Um, first off, if you want the second derivative, you got to have the first derivative, right? So we're just going to do dy by dx. And I'm going to pick that up and move it over here. dy by dx equals. So we're going to do this as a product. Okay, so we're just going to apply the product rule to this. So it's x, right? So it's f, the first function, x, times the derivative of the second function, which is going to be 1 half x minus 1 to the negative a half. Okay, and so if you like, you, you might want to write this as, you yeah. know, so you, you may choose to write that in that form there, say, all right, that's what we're going to do. Okay, plus the second function, right? So we've got x minus 1 to the half times the derivative of the first function, which is 1. So some people show the 1, some don't. I kind of like to put it there because then I can look at that and say, oh, right, the x minus 1 to the half, that's the second function. And then, oh, right, I've got a 1 because that's just the derivative of x. Okay, so we look at that and we say there is a common factor that can be pulled out, right? Because they both have an x minus 1. And we take the lowest, which is the x minus 1 to the 1 half. So I've got x minus 1 to the negative 1 half. And so here we end up with x over 2. And here we end up with x minus 1 to the 1, right? I'm not going to write in the 1, but you know when you factor a negative a half out of this, it's going to be a half minus negative a half, which is 1. All right, so let's clean this up, because we're basically going to write this as a quotient. And then when we do the second derivative, we're going to apply the quotient rule. Okay, so let's do a couple of lines of cleanup. All right, so we're going to need a common denominator of 2, so it's going to be x over 2 plus, so this will be 2x over 2 minus 1 over 2. Okay, so we're going to end up with, all right, I do, oh no, it's going to be 2 over 2 over 2. How did that become a half? It didn't. Okay, so what do we got? X, 3x, we've got 3x minus 2. 
The denominator is a 2, and this belongs in the denominator, so x minus 1 to the half. And that is dy by dx. So there's our first derivative. 3x minus 2 over 2 times x minus 1 to the half. Now, we're going to take the derivative of that. Okay, so d2y of dx squared is equal to, so g of x, the bottom function, right? So 2 times x minus 1 to the half times the derivative of the numerator. So it's denominator times derivative of numerator, which is what? 3 minus the numerator, which is 3x minus 2, times the derivative of the denominator, which is 1 half times 2 x minus 1 to the negative 1 half Right, this really huge d2y over dx squared, and then I've got to squash in the actual stuff that matters. Okay, so what have we got here? All right, over 4 times x minus 1. So I'm just going to square that, right? So 2 squared is 4, and x minus 1 to the half squared is just x minus 1. Okay, that's the square of the, I'm not going to write 2x minus 1 to the half all squared, I'm just going to square it. So, uh, what should we do? Let's clean up the top a little bit, I guess. So, equals, okay, so what do we got? 6 times x minus 1 to the half, so that's this guy. Minus, okay, so the, the half and the 2... Right? So half times 2 is just 1. So minus, okay, let's do this. 3x minus 2 times x minus 1 to the negative a half all over. So I'm writing it this way because now this is going to be a common factor, right? The x minus 1 to the negative a half, we're going to pull that out as a common factor. So we got x minus 1 to the negative a half, square bracket, we got 6 minus, oh no, wait, sorry, it's not just a 6, right? 6 times x minus 1 to the 1, right? Because we need to get a positive half here, so when we multiply this times this, we'll get the positive 1 half, minus 3x minus 2 over 4x minus 1. And we must extend the page. Okay, so this can come down here, right? Negative 1 half goes down. So equal, so on the bottom we're going to have 4x minus 1 to what power? So I have a 1 there already. When I pull this down, it's going to be a half. So I've got something to the 1 times something to the half. So it'll be 3 halves, right? I'll just add those exponents. So this is going to be a 3 halves. And up top, what do we got? 6x minus 6 minus 3x plus 2. OK, so that's going to be 3x minus 4 over 4. And at this point, we can change that. Well, so we can leave it x minus 1 to the 3 halves, or we can write this as the square root of x minus 1 cubed. Okay. So that's one form. There's, now, there's another one that looks wildly different from this. Like seriously, wildly different. But, but would eventually become this if you. 
So if I'm going to key this, if I'm going to ask a question like this, if I'm going to key, I'm going to have to key it both ways. Okay, so what if you wrote this as y is equal to x cubed minus x squared to the half, and then did that, what if you did it like this? Okay, because the answer is just they seriously wildly different looking. And if you want to see what the other one looks like, give it a try, like on the weekend, right? Just try doing the, the x cubed minus x squared to the half, and, you know, a little bit of chain rule. And... Determine f double prime of x, if of x, if, 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 if of x, say if f of x five times fast. Okay, so we're just going to start by finding the first derivative, right? It's a quotient rule. There's really not a lot of simplifying you could do with it, so you're just going to do a quotient rule. And what do we get? So x plus 1 times 10x minus uh, 5x squared times 1. I like to write it, just, just so that I'm saying this is f of x times g prime of x over, all right, so we got 10x squared minus 5x squared. Uh, so 5. So, yeah, question on that. Do, I don't really want to factor it because I have to do the derivative again, right? And it's a lot easier to do the derivative of 5x squared plus 10x, right, which is 10x plus 10, than it is to do the derivative of 5x times x plus 2, which now either becomes a product. Uh, okay. So we don't want to go there, right? Not yet. Okay. So we want to go there in the second derivative, yeah, then, okay. And would it simplify any is also a question, right? Like, can I cancel anything? And if you can't, it's, yeah, why bother? All right, so f. Uh, once more, right? Same deal. See if you agree with that. So, yeah, well, I could pull out an x plus one, right? It's a common factor up in the top there. So equal. So let's pull out an x plus 1. Then this term still needs an x plus 1 times a 10x plus 10 minus, okay, this guy is still there, 5x squared plus 10x. And this guy is gone, this guy, and you're just leaving a 2, right? Okay, so you know, why do we do that? Well, that x plus 1 on the top is going to take out one of the x plus 1s on the bottom, right? So we're going to have an x plus 1 cubed on the bottom. We'll expand the top, having removed this guy. So, you know, we can sort of at this point think, all right, get rid of that. That's going to become cubed. So my next line is now going to be, okay, I'm just going to expand this. What do we get? 10x squared. Uh, plus 10x plus 10x plus 20x plus 10 
minus, sorry, I think I could do this in one shot. So minus 10x squared minus 20x over x plus 1 cubed. Hey, that's kind of neat. It's actually kind of really neat how it just sort of simplifies right down to something simple ish. If you call reciprocals of cubics simple, but you know, but it's just a 10 now, right? That's, that's kind of neat. Okay, questions? All right, one more, right? Sorry, one more on this side of the page. <laughs> Determine the eighth derivative. Wow. All right, so we could just do all eight of them, or we, we can, let's do a few and then look for a pattern, right? So it's like, okay. So if f of x is x to the ninth, then what's f prime of x? 9x to the eighth, right? What's f double prime? Actually, you know, maybe we want to do, use a 2 here. So let's call that f1 of x, f2. So what's f2 of x? Okay, so 72, but don't get too excited. Let's go with 9 times so 9 times 8x to the 7th, OK? Because otherwise, the next one, we've got to multiply 72 by 7. Remember, you don't have a calculator, so. So what's f3 of x? Well, 9 times 8 times 7x to the 6th. All right, so do we need to do f4, or could we jump to f8? Okay, so f4, 9 times 8 times 7 times 6, x to the fifth. All right, so dot, dot, dot. All right, so what do we got? Well, what's the power of x going to be? It's going to be x to the 1. So what are the numbers up front going to be? Yeah, 9 to the 7, 6, 5, 4, 2, 9 factorial. So, 9 factorial x to the 1. Will we have to put a number to that, or is 9 factorial x acceptable? 9, 9 factorial is acceptable, especially when you don't have a calculator. You know, but it's only, I mean, it's an integer, right? It's 362,808. Oh, easy. When you go there one step at a time, right? 9 to 72 to 72 times 7, 490, 504. Yeah, exactly. All right, moving along. Uh, we'll just keep going. Use implicit differentiation to determine the following. All right, so implicit differentiation, actually, it's kind of neat what happens here. So let's see what happens here. So, OK, do y prime, right? I mean, you got to start with y prime. Now, you can't write y prime equals, right? Because we're doing implicit differentiation. There's already an equal sign there. So we have to d by dx, d by dx, d by dx, d by dx, right? You take the derivative. I mean, really, it's d by dx on the left side and the right side, and then using the sum. So we just have to do derivative of this, 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 and this. All right, so, so derivative of this, so product. detail there. Okay, so let's keep this. 
Let's <clears throat> All right. So we know we got to move our y primes to one side or the other. What I don't want to do is end up with a negative y minus 1. That's just too much, right? Too much awkwardness. Though it will make no difference in the end. Okay. So y prime. All right. So is that y prime? Or did I mess anything up? So now we got y prime. So y double prime is actually kind of easy at this point, right? I mean, easy if the quotient rule. Yeah, if it's a quotient. And there's still a y in there. OK. So now we're just going to apply the quotient rule to this. There will be a little implicit differentiation involved, right? Because we have a y. So it's uh, g of x times f prime of x minus f of x times g prime of x over g of x squared. Okay. So here's where it gets neat. We know what y prime is, right? We know that y prime is y plus 1 over 2 minus x. So you see the y prime there? Well, let's just go y plus 1 over 2 minus x. And watch what happens. That cancels. So this whole thing here just becomes y plus 1. And then what do we have here? We got plus y and minus minus plus 1 over 2 minus x squared. All right, so what do we got? We got two y's, two and two ones. And there's y double prime. Right, so when you are deriving implicitly and when you're doing a second derivative because you're going to end up with a y prime in the second derivative, you could say, but wait, I know what y prime is. So I can substitute it in. And in this case, it's simplified very nicely, right? Does it always get simplified like that or not? If you just got to pray. <laughs> not necessarily, but in the next one, we're actually going to do something a smidge different, right? Because in the next one, we are doing a second derivative using implicit differentiation, but we're evaluating it at a particular point. So let's see what we do in that case, right? All right, is everybody good with this? OK, so work out the second derivative at the point 2, negative 2. Right. So evaluate the second derivative at that point. OK, so keep in mind that, yeah, we got to do stuff, but we're evaluating the second derivative at a particular point. OK, so what do we got? x squared y plus 3y squared equals 4. So we need to do the derivative of that, which is going to give us what? So product rule says we got x squared times y prime plus y times 2x plus 6y y prime equals 0. Okay, so we got some sum and difference, and we've got a little product for, so x squared y is a product, so we have f of x, x squared, times uh, g prime of x, which is y prime. 
plus g of x, which is the y, times f prime of x, which is the 2x. That's the first term. Then we differentiate with respect to y, 6y, y prime. And the right-hand side being constant is 0. So what do we want to do now? We want to get y prime, right? OK, so we got to get y prime. So y prime, now what do we got? x squared plus 6y. OK, so uh, I factored a y prime out of the two terms that had it, and I moved the term that didn't have it over. And we get y prime is equal to negative 2xy over x squared plus 6y. All right, so when we do the second derivative, we know we're going to end up with a y prime in there, right? Because there's some y's in there. Well, like at least one y prime. Here's where the shortcut comes in. So remember, what we're aiming for is what is the value of the second derivative at the point 2, negative 2. The second derivative is going to include y prime in it. So here's the question. What's y prime at 2, negative 2? Right? Because when we go to work out the y prime, which we're eventually going to have to do, we can already just have a value for it. Right? It's just going to be a number at that point. So let's just go over here and say, OK, what's y prime? Or I get, yeah, I'm using y prime. I suppose I should be using dy by dx. But that's horrifically horrific to write. Right? y prime is easy to write. So we're going to say, so what's y prime at 2, negative 2? All right, so it's negative 2x, which is 2, y, which is negative 2, over x squared, so 2 squared, plus 6 times negative 2. Okay. So this is the value of y prime at the point 2, negative 2. So we got 8. And we've got 4 minus 12, negative 8, is negative 1. So when we do y double prime, right, and keeping in mind that we're going to be evaluating at a certain point, we're going to have y primes in there, but we can just replace them with negative 1s, right? Because we know that at that point, y prime is equal to negative 1. OK, onward. So now we want y double prime. So we're going to do the derivative of y prime, right? And it's going to be a quotient rule. And we're going to have all kinds of terms. So I better write small now. OK, so it's g of x times f prime of x, which is a product, right? So it's f negative 2 x, y prime minus 2y times 1. Okay, so that's that. That's the derivative of that. Minus 2x, y prime. Uh, minus, uh, does that work? It's the derivative of the, so it's minus 2x1. Man, I always paint this, so it's 2x plus 6y. Okay. That line. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so the second derivative of this, using the quotient rules, this is g of x on the bottom, right? So it's g of x times f prime of x. So I need the derivative of this. And it's a product, right? 
So product, so it's going to be negative. So this is f of x, just the g of x, right? So we're going to get negative 2x <coughs> times the derivative of y, which is y prime. So that's the negative 2x y prime. Okay, plus negative 2y times the derivative of x, okay, which becomes minus 2y. So it's, it's plus negative 2y. I'm just going to write that as minus 2y times 1, which is the derivative of the x. Okay, so this is g of x. This is f prime of x. There's a minus, uh, then it's f of x, so minus 2xy times the derivative of this, which is 2x plus 6y, y, or sorry, plus 6y prime, right, just the derivative of that, over whatever, right? Okay, so uh, we look at that, what do we say? <laughs> well, we can say a couple of things. At this point, we can just say, let's just throw in the values, right, like seriously. We know what x and y are, but let we maybe clean it up a little bit. So let's clean it up a, a smidge, not a whole lot, but let's clean it up a little bit, and then we'll substitute in our value for x, which is 2, for y, which is negative 2, and for y prime, which is negative 1, right? So everywhere we see y prime, we know that's going to be a negative 1. Okay, but just before we do that, let's see if we can clean up just a little bit. So let's pull a negative out of here. And let's go x squared plus 6y and make this 2xy prime plus 2y. Okay? So these guys are both negative. That's kind of ugly. So we'll pull the negative out. Got this. Make these guys positive. We've got minus minus. So this is going to be plus 2xy times 2x plus 6y prime. Didn't do anything special there. Okay, I don't need to multiply this out, right? Because we're just going to substitute in numbers, okay? So, you know, you could multiply it out. And x squared plus 6y quantity squared. Let me move this over. So y double prime evaluated at 2, negative 2 is equal to, so now we're just going to substitute in, right? So I've got a negative, and I've got 2 squared plus 6 times negative 2, and then I've got 2 times x, which is 2, times y prime. What's y prime? Negative 1, right? So we already evaluated y prime up above, right, plus 2 times y, plus 2 times x, times y, times, let's throw that in brackets, right, uh, wow, left a lot of room to do this, 2 times 2, Uh, 2 times 2 plus 6 times negative 1. Okay, so 2x, 2 times 2, plus 6y prime, 6y prime, which is negative 1, all over, don't, hopefully there's, you just have more room. Oh, wait, all right, so we're, we're substituting in, right? Uh, what do we got? 2 squared plus 6 times negative 2 all squared. Equals. All right, so we could just evaluate. So I've got a negative out front. So negative bracket. I can work this out, right? That's 4 minus 12, which is negative 8. That's 4, sorry, that's negative 4 plus negative 4. So that's another negative 8 plus... That's a negative 8 times uh, 4 minus 6. All over 4 plus uh, negative 8 squared. OK, uh, positive 64, negative 64. 
minus 16 over positive 64 Oh, wait, 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 wait,